Good morning. Good morning and welcome back to Y254 in the morning. This is WCW. Just in case you're joining us, engage us on all our social media platforms at Y254 channel. Engage me at Faith Msoli. And so yesterday was World Teachers Day and teachers go through a lot in school they take up the roles of being a parent and at the same time be a teacher and so they say that for you to be a teacher you have it has to be a calling and speaking of being a calling it a calling teachers come in all forms and today in studio we have a guest who is a teacher at the same time, she is a model and running an organization to sensitize uh, teenagers on teenage pregnancies. Her name is Belinda Nabwire. Welcome to the studios this morning. Thank you. Okay, so you are a teacher. And as, as I just said earlier on, that being a teacher is a calling. Is it a calling to you now that you are a model and a teacher or is it that there are grades that put you uh, in a position of being a teacher? Uh, not really. Uh -huh. I can say it's a calling uh -huh. uh, uh, be, be, because at, at the end of the day as I teach <laughs> I have to make sure that I impact a child's life uh -huh. and, and uh, for me to image of them. To, 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 impact, to impact a child's life, mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 it also means I'm impacting the society. Mm -hmm. So to me, it is a calling. It's a calling. So what's your take? Let me start by asking, what's your take on CBC curriculum? I believe the CBC is a very good uh, uh, curriculum because mm -hmm. uh, 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 we, 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 we are not just focusing on, on the parents alone, mm -hmm. uh, but, but, but we, are, we are focusing on them, uh, on the student, on, on, on our children in all round mm -hmm. because we have, we, we have students who are gifted mm -hmm. academically uh, and uh, also those ones who are who are, who are gifted in terms of sports, mm -hmm. in terms of drama, mm -hmm. etc. And for CBC, it is, it is focusing on all these things. So uh, to me, it is a very good curriculum. Wow. Yeah. So maybe I just went so fast ahead because I was just so concerned about your take on uh, CBC. But now tell us, who is Belinda? And other than being a teacher, what else does Belinda do? Uh, Belinda Nabira is my name, as you just said. Mm -hmm. I am a teacher of French and geography, mm -hmm. a high school teacher, and also a model. And, uh, and, and, and as a model, mm -hmm. during my reign, as reign queen of the year 2020, mm -hmm. I am uh, focusing on creating awareness on teen pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Then apart from that, uh, from my heart, uh, mm -hmm. I am also an advocate of uh, breast cancer awareness. So how, how, do, how did it come that you're a teacher and a model at the same time? Uh, fr uh, uh, right from when I was, uh, was growing up, mm -hmm. I would uh, fancy uh, how, how, how I would see the models uh, and, and also pageants, mm -hmm. how the girls would be uh, dressed and everything. So, uh, so after I finished my campus, I, I, I said, why, why not give it a try? And that's why I'm here today. Wow. Yeah. So it's something that you grew looking up to yeah. being a model. Okay. All right. So what does it take to be a model? Um, just like any other profession, mm -hmm. uh, it is also a profession. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a model, you mm -hmm. are not just uh, s supposed to be looking uh, glamorous for the cameras or uh, being uh, dressed up and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for models, our, our main aim mm -hmm. is to impact the, the society, is to, is to give back to the society mm -hmm. because it is from this society that, that, that we've come from mm -hmm. and so we are also supposed to to give it back mm -hmm. so as a model you are supposed to be passionate you're supposed to be compassionate mm -hmm. and you are supposed to be willing to uh, you're supposed to be willing to give back to mm -hmm. the society and help people regardless of even if it will come back to you or it won't come back to you so mm -hmm. it is uh, being a leader 
uh, offering service to the society. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, what, what, what prizes? Because I believe that there is always a prize for a winner. So what prize comes with being Reign Queen of the Year? Okay, so with the Reign Queen of the Year, mm -hmm. uh, the prize is that you have a platform mm -hmm. to be able to speak out, to be mm -hmm. able to speak out, to, to also a voice to most people mm -hmm. who cannot speak out. Mm -hmm. Like for me, as a Reign Queen of the Year, I'm uh, able to speak for, for, for teenagers mm -hmm. and uh, specifically on teen pregnancy uh, issues. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, as, as you're aware, at the moment, uh, in our Kenyan history, mm -hmm. we are uh, recording high rates of teen pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it is what I'm really advocating for as the Reign Queen of the Year, but also other models mm -hmm. uh, and uh, other pageants. They mm -hmm. also have their own things that they speak towards to, or, or uh, they create awareness from. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, speaking of teenage pregnancies, speaking of teenage pregnancies, you find that uh, most girls out there, teenage girls, they are going out of their way, not necessarily knowing the rigors of being a teen mom. They are uh, like exchanging sex for pads because of poverty. There's so much poverty from where they come from to an extent that uh, a, a, a boy buys you pads and then you exchange pads for sex. Uh, what are you doing in your, in your, in your capacity to eradicate such? Uh, first of all, I believe that uh, this matter is not just a matter of one person, mm -hmm. but it is uh, us as a society. Mm -hmm. We as Kenyans, mm -hmm. we are supposed to join in hands mm -hmm. and uh, speak about this matter. Because uh, some of these teens, mm -hmm. when you speak to them, mm -hmm. they will tell you they went to their parents, but their mom told them, shall mm -hmm. we think about eating or we shall think about food? Mm -hmm. and, 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 for, and, and, and for the mother, uh, she, she's thinking of, of the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. I have a family to feed. Mm -hmm. And if I take these 50 shillings to buy the pads, mm -hmm. uh, then, it, then it, it will mean uh, today all my, uh, uh, all, all my household is going to sleep hungry. So I believe that the same way that the government has uh, put uh, condoms in uh, institutions, uh, it, it should also be the same thing with sanitary towels. We, we should have the sanitary towels at the disposal of every woman, mm -hmm. and not just uh, teenagers, every woman. That mm -hmm. uh, if, if in case you left the house and, and you did not have a sanitary towel, mm -hmm. and uh, you reach in town, and uh, you are, uh, your, your menses have commenced. If you go to a washroom, you'll be able to access the sanitary towels. Wow. So before we continue, just remind our viewers where they can find you on social media. Uh, on social media, I, I, I have a, a breast cancer awareness page mm -hmm. on Instagram called the Pink Power of Hope. And also my uh, Instagram handle is Belly and Edison. Mm -hmm. And on Facebook, uh, you'll find me as Belly Belly. Wow. So uh, speaking of condoms being all over like you go in the washrooms and you find condoms are there but you don't find pads there we live in a patriarchal society where you find that uh, a girl gets pregnant she drops out of school for some time during the pregnancy but the boy continues to go to school so uh you're, you're talking to girls teenage girls so who is talking to these boys who, uh, for a pregnancy to be there, there has to be a boy, there has to be a girl? Uh, do you think that we are just but mopping the floor while the tap is still running? Uh, I believe that when we are talking, mm -hmm. as we talk uh, right now, right now mm -hmm. sorry, we, we, we also try to include the boys. Because mm -hmm. uh, for, for the boys, we, we tell them, even if you, you make the girl pregnant, mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, you, 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 you can walk free, but remember we also have HIV, 
we have uh, STIs and STDs. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so it, it is just a conversation that should incorporate both the boys and the girls, and not just girls alone. And uh, as we as we hold our conversations, mm -hmm. that is what we focus on. Because because uh, if, if, if we mold the girls mm -hmm. and we leave out the boys, then in future we, we will have a problem. Mm -hmm. We will have uh, men. Uh, we, we will have women, and we won't have men. So it is a conversation that should bring everybody on board. Wow. So there is a time that the government wanted to introduce sex education in our schools because you find that we, ha we were having a conversation last week and there is a panelist who was telling us that the youngest mother in Kenya is nine years old. So there is a time they wanted to introduce sex education to in school. But you find that, uh, because you find that in most cases, these girls and boys, are, they are abused. But they just don't have the language to come and tell you, Mommy, this is what happened to me. She has been abused, but she doesn't have this language that she'll use to tell you that someone touched me inappropriately. Do you think that it is the right time to, for sex education to be introduced in our schools? I, I, I think it's not the right time. Mm -hmm. We should already be doing it. Because mm -hmm. we have uh, children as young as uh, nine years old who are already engaged in sexual activities. Mm -hmm. We have uh, kids uh, who, 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 and also for the kids, they also have access to the internet. And all this content is in the internet. Mm -hmm. So if we don't uh, take up the responsibility to talk to them, mm -hmm. they will go ahead and uh, and, and find it on the internet. Mm -hmm. So if we are not doing it, mm -hmm. let us all do it. Mm -hmm. Because we are in a society that our teenagers are already engaging in sexual activities. Mm -hmm. As a teacher, do you have this segment in your school where you set aside guiding and counseling to, to teenagers in school where you teach? Uh, of course, we, ha we do it. Because... Mm -hmm. uh, 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 because uh, after the COVID period, mm -hmm. our, our teenagers were exposed to a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and if, if we just go back to teaching mm -hmm. as, in the, as in the past, then mm -hmm. uh, we, we won't be getting what is intended of us. Because mm -hmm. uh, the whole of last year, our teenagers were exposed to, uh, to a lot of psychological trauma, social trauma, etc. So. <coughs> From teaching, mm -hmm. we're also supposed to be molding these kids socially, so, mm -hmm. so that they can also be able to uh, have relationships amongst themselves, the society, and even the environment mm -hmm. uh, quite well. Speaking of modeling the, the children or rather the students, when COVID hit, you realize that that is the time when teenage pregnancies hit high. And most people were saying that schools should open, children should go back to school. Does it mean that parents have left their responsibilities to teachers in totality? I believe... Um I, 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 I really can't say that our parents have left their responsibility to the teachers uh, all through because also mm -hmm. these, uh, uh, the, these teachers, mm -hmm. they, they are also parents to these students. Mm -hmm. So if we say that parents have uh, left their responsibility to teachers, mm -hmm. it will be a lie. Mm -hmm. So I believe that um, uh, it, 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 it's, it's just a matter of change. Mm -hmm. And also, we as the society, we don't get to understand our things properly. Mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, if you take, for example, mm -hmm. how, uh, how in, in our days mm -hmm. teenagers used to be treated, it's not the same way that uh, current uh, teenagers would be treated. Mm -hmm. Because our issues were totally different from uh, what the current teenagers are facing. Mm -hmm. So it is just a collective responsibility mm -hmm. and for us also to listen to the teenagers, mm -hmm. to get to understand them so mm -hmm. that we can also have a lasting solution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Rather than uh, blaming, it is parents, it is teachers, etc. So we just all get on board, mm -hmm. listen to the teenagers and try to come up with a lasting solution mm -hmm. to be able to help. Well, so moving on, you're also dealing with uh, victims and survivors of breast cancer. 
So I know that cancer is something that is so tormenting that one would never even want to go through a uh, such kind of experience. So when you when when you talk to the survivors and uh, victims of breast cancer, what are some of the experiences that they give to you? Uh, okay, uh, one of the experience they 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 say is that um, when we get this information to people early enough, mm -hmm. when people are informed of mm -hmm. the issues on cancer, uh, we'll be able to save a lot of lives. Uh, when we also change our lifestyles, our eating uh, habits, that will also uh, be able to reduce the the, the, the number of cancer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you give out uh, bras to victims, survivors of breast cancer. So which type of bra? Because I believe that there are, there are bras that are designed for someone who has had a, a vasectomy, a mastectomy, I mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, 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 so uh, first of all, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it is also for the, uh, for, for the patient themselves. Mm -hmm. the, because uh, they, they, they also know what is what is comfortable for them. Mm -hmm. So when when we're issuing the bras, mm -hmm. we, we leave it to the patients to be able uh, to choose for themselves mm -hmm. which one they feel comfortable in and which one uh, it, it's much preferred for them. So we don't go to choosing for them. Mm -hmm. So they will just come. Uh, we we have the range of bras, so they select and. Uh, the, the, the one that they feel fit for them. That's how we go about it. Wow. So you have an event coming up. Talk about it. Uh, so first, uh, uh, we, we are still in talks. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a hockey tournament, and uh, we are looking forward to be able to create awareness on breast cancer and uh, prostate cancer. <laughs> so we'll either hold it uh, late next month, November, <laughs> or early December, because this month is breast cancer, <laughs> and next month is uh, prostate cancer. Wow. Yeah. So, parting shot, your parting shot? Uh, uh, so my parting shot is, uh, I would just like to encourage everybody uh, to be able to self-examine themselves on breast cancer uh, at least once a month. Because early detection saves life. Thank you. Wow. So it's been a good conversation. Uh, we thank you for coming. And we wish to have you more on our show so that we can talk more of uh, issues that are affecting us in our society. Here at Way254, we celebrate you. Now, the world has got so many hurdles. And whatever you're going through, know that that is not the end. If you are a teenage mom out there, just remember that that is not the end of the world. Use whatever disadvantage, use whatever challenges that you are having as a ladder to greatness. And parents go through so much. There are times they might even forget to remind us of the basics that they have always been telling us. But even if they did and you didn't have self-respect and value for yourself, it would just be like a wild goose chase. Thank you for watching. My name is Faith Msoli. Kayesu is up next with Girlstock. <laughs>